I'm Rob LaCuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby. I'm here with Danielle Degwala, who portrays Miranda in the acclaimed post-apocalyptic limited series, Station Eleven. Danielle, I don't even know where to begin with this show because it really mean it meant a lot to me. I just, I loved every moment. At its core, it's about hope, love, art, and humanity, right? And uh, it's very life-affirming. It's not your typical post-apocalyptic show about a pandemic because we've all been through that. We're still going through it and it's not very nice. This one's more life-affirming. That's what I loved about it. But what did you love about it? You got scripts, you're part of the show. When you think back, what did you most love about Station Eleven? I think I love not knowing. I think I've, in the last few years of my life, just have been in this state of going with the flow, this, this, this appreciating and accepting the unknown. Um, and that allows for a richer, more hyper-present experience of the now, right? And we were kind of floating, like sometimes I didn't know like what was going on. Scenes were changing, to, uh, you know, from time to time. Uh, Miranda's a peculiar woman uh, figure. Um, and we're learning about her in these, these fragments and we're learning about everyone and the world that is being created post the world we've known. So I, huh, if, if anything, the unknown is, is the most attractive and the most dynamic. You know, and I, I I had to appreciate it at that time because we were starting to flow into it literally ourselves. And so yeah. I think that was just compound, like it was just layer on top of layer of just go with what go with what you do not know. And and you wow. will have you have to have some faith in that. That is such a good answer that I was not expecting that, but it's so I true. Was, it just came. <laughs> it came to me in a dream. No, but it's really good. I was so fascinated with how you characterize Miranda because on paper, right, she's a logistics expert, which I'm already falling asleep just thinking about the words of logistics expert, right? Boring. And she's a graphic novelist by night. Of course, the fundamental part of the whole show, she's the linchpin which we figure out later. You'd think from her demeanour that she's reserved and distant, but there's this magnetic warmth to her, which I think, which is coming through the screen right now. It's just you, I suppose. But I'm wondering, what were you aiming to achieve with her? Because she's quite complicated and it took me a while to understand who she was. Yeah, it took me the time too. The, the, it took me, Patrick, Hero, we're all searching together, um, figuring it out. Um, I think that's what Miranda was doing though, you know, it, the complicated nature of, and, and her accepting that, like she's, she is fierce in just saying, I'm going to blow up what's not working. I'm going to set a fire and set a blaze, even myself. I think that those things are super, super attractive. Like that's somebody who's going for the life that they actually want yet don't know if they can attain. I think that's all of us. See, that's like, that's the beauty of the show. That's the beauty of, wow. the, you know, the people like everybody's doing something that they don't necessarily think they would have done before. Right. You, life would have been mad different if you if everything would have persisted as it was, but they don't have a choice in it. And Miranda is interesting because Miranda knows I just don't have a choice, period. There is no pandemic for for me to be like now life has to be different for her. The It was it was. It, it was it was already happening, you know, and I, that's that's attractive. That's that's the kind of person I, you know, that I've always found really interesting. And in and she's interested in diving in the thing that she needs in order to be who she needs to be. Yeah. And she is um, the, the line. I don't want to live the wrong life and then die. Yeah. Very simple line. And that came and from yeah. Arthur. <laughs> Yeah, that came from Arthur, and that's something that she recalls, yeah. and that's be, kind of almost becomes her motto because it encapsulates everything that she ends up doing when she decides to not be at his side and go to Malaysia on a conference, and then the world falls apart, mm -hmm. and then she's giving a speech to all these um, faceless men in suits, and she's saying, you know, you know, my my partner just died, and here we are. Like that's really deep. But it's, but it, yeah, I just find, I found it really difficult to understand her motivation. Can you talk me through what, what was going on there with Patrick and Hero and yourself and trying to make, make us understand her motivations? Uh, I mean, it's simple. Um, she just 
she's somebody processing obviously we've learned through the film that she through the the show that she's processing a particular trauma a specific loss and we're always trying to regain some aspect of ourselves that we've long felt unattainable um um and it's beyond just like the relationship with arthur it's the self it's not necessarily the, the folks outside of ourselves it's herself it's something that she had com- no control over whatsoever and 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 she's just going about I'm gonna do the thing right like she's she's a survivalist by as a result of the trauma like I, she's ready for the, the the hurricane she's ready for somebody to drop the pin and say they're they're done with her she's re- she is <laughs> she is the hurricane, right? And so um, she's trying to make sense of, of that in herself. And, and once she does come to, to, to the understanding that, that that's where, that he is where she wanted to be with, that he is, he is whom she wanted to be with, um, it's too late. And it's, it's also, that's also the beauty of the logistics dynamic, which sometimes we don't get the thing that we seek or yeah. it doesn't work out that way. It works out another way. And that's the beautiful yeah. irony of her because she, everything's planned, it has to be, that's her job. And yet nothing really seems to work out that way. And we are all feeling that at the moment. We've been feeling it for two long, painful years. This show comes along called Station Eleven. And of course it's about this graphic novel she wrote to, to get through that horrifying trauma that she carries in her DNA. There's a lot going on. And it's a lot going on. <laughs> Don't you just love numbers and logistics and all that stuff? Because I came to the realization, I wasn't even thinking about this before. I was like, so 10, 10 is, you know, endings. No, 10 is beginnings. And 11 is a master number. <laughs> so she named it. She's like, yeah. ah, I've come to a thorough knowledge about what my life is and what it means to, to reckon with it. And to reckon with those who I lo- who we love or who or who are sent to us and we are sent to them to crash and to learn from. I, I yeah, I was just thinking about that today. Yeah. And how it's, eleven it's, is that number of I never thought of that. too. It's endings and it's 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 you're deep in the beginning. Ten is the beginning because it's one. Because right. you gotta sing make it singular. You don't go eleven, one and one and two. It's just eleven. And it's so right. Yeah, I don't know. I, I was, yeah, <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, she's come to that, to that beginning, that new beginning, and that new beginning may not involve someone else. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And so how did you feel, given that, that production shut down um, when the pandemic hit? So because this started before the pandemic, and I've spoken to almost everyone on the show, everyone's got similar answers, obviously, about, and you probably talk about this a lot with media, about the parallels. But, I mean, it is still when you think back, it's quite eerie that even us viewers, I was like, I don't know if I want to watch a pandemic show because I'm already living it. But of mm-hmm. course, this is not that at all. And it gave me so much more depth and understanding. So is that how you were able to get through it? I I was deep in it at the beginning, right? Like we yeah. started with episode three, uh, some of episode one, but we started with episode three at the top of 2020. And I was, you know, I'm like, hey guys, Something's going on. So I'm attentive and yet not, not at masked up yet. Just not, like, man, not yet. Ooh, I'm aware of germs. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah. I got a, a germaphobe fam family and they're, they're like, Hey, look, you know, this is happening and this is happening. And you see people eat, like, I was on a train one day in Chicago and I was like, somebody was eating something. And I was just like, this doesn't look right. And you, he licked his fingers <laughs> and then he touched <laughs> He licked his fingers and then he touched something. And I was like, this is not the way, right? And and so I'm feeling all of that. I'm Uh, learning about the doctor who um, passed away uh, in the Philippines. It was just like this on top of this, on top of this. And I was like, this is a thing. You know, my son was going to come visit me. I like nixed it, right? It's, it's, and not knowing where we were going to go. And Chicago was one of the first places that um, some of the the first people who were coming back from China had um, and and had been you know di- uh, diagnosed with with COVID at the time. So it's a whirlpool. It's the beginning of a whirlpool, and you're swirling down, and you're like, I'm not gonna go down. And you, I could, but I'm like, I we could go down, and then we just started yeah. going down. 
Yeah. And so so I, ours was different because Miranda lives pre-pan. She just lives pre-pan. And so that's that's where I was. I wasn't necessarily being succumbed. I didn't necessarily succumb to the experience yeah. of our post-pan world. Yeah, right. But I was still, but that's the thing. That's the thing about Miranda. She she knows it already. She is the um the prophet to <laughs> she is the prophet to the post pan livers. Yeah. Live, and, right. Un, unknowingly or knowingly. Unknowingly. That's yeah. Like, yeah. And that's what's so deep. You know, when she's finally at her last moments of her life and she starts seeing flashes of what she's created, like that's super deep. That actually reminds me of how the show puts art on a pedestal about how it sustains us as human beings. I don't think I've seen a show that's done that in quite such a nuanced and emotional way. And uh, so I wonder as an artist yourself, performer and artist, how did you feel about portraying somebody where art and, and expression is, is that central to the whole narrative? I got it. I get it. Like it, it's not, um, it's, this is life or death, right? Yeah. For her, it's life or death. It wasn't about trying to sell a book. It, and, and I don't know if it's, if it's, if, if that, if that's somebody's speed, then that's their speed, but I get it. I, I, I am a performance artist and do a lot of experimental stuff on my own. That doesn't feel the same as, you know, it, it's, it, it operates differently. It's not, it's, 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 it's NFS, right? It's not for sale. It's for, it's for my life. It's for, um, it's for my transformative, uh, spirit. It's for, it's for a co co conversation with community as opposed to, um, you know, accruing value, whatever the hell that is. It, it doesn't have value no. in that manner. No. It's something way beyond a currency. And that's what that was for her. She's not, she doesn't call herself a graphic novelist. It's not about that. And it's, be, it's not a hobby. It's about processing. It's about processing our own unknowns and, and questioning and checking ourselves. Art, that's what art is supposed to do. I, I, I guess, wow. <laughs> and a lot of other questions, right? But yeah. that's what that is. And I totally, uh, w once we like, oh, this is clear, this is clear, this is clear, this is clear, <laughs> dive head first into Jeez. that as uh, uh, as a part of her of her modus operandi. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and I started getting it too. We all have those things that drive us passionately. And, it yeah. and for some people it's not art, but for many of us it is. Um, but then we get moments like, I just, I'm never going to get this out of my head. It's so simple. But when uh, there's a quiet moment of acknowledgement and despair, when Miranda and Jim see each other and they admit they're scared, just really simply, because I think we've all had that moment in the last few years, they embrace. And I was floored by that because I'm thinking to myself, no shit, we're all scared. Give me a hug. Let's, let's hug it out. I don't what think we do got that? to do that though. You know, not even necessarily with the stranger. Right. Like it, <laughs> we were all at, at home and we're like, we want to go out. <laughs> at least America's like, we want to go out. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. I think we needed it. We needed a, somebody needed a hug. Somebody needed a, a recognize. We needed a recognition of each other's humanity in that moment. And, and, and I, some, some might've gotten it right. But like, I know from an, from my American experience, and I live in Georgia and we opened up pretty damn quick, right? Like May. And, and we weren't ready. No, no, we weren't ready, but oh, we needed a minute. And I think, and that's the touch, the human touch that was necessary in a, in a state of extreme urgency. It's, it is quiet before the storm truly hits and you needed to register community. You needed to register um, that kind of uh, agape love. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. This yeah. show was so deep and I just wonder now, looking back, it's been a while since you were in production. Mm -hmm. um, when people talk about Station 11 with you, what's the thing that most comes to mind? The thing that you're going to carry with you that you learned about yourself, about yourself as a performer and personally when you're moving forward in your life? Mm, I it's um that that was pretty uh, you can do it alone but you're never alone right you and I guess you know that's the thing of the of of station 11 the, the graphic novel it's that 
there is always, we're all, so here we go. We live in a digital media world. We're constantly engaged in conversations. You can hop in and out of the conversation. You can do it on Twitter. You can do it on uh, Instagram. You can do it on Facebook, whatever. There is a dialogue incessantly happening. Sometimes people plug out, right? To be like, let me get myself back and plug back in. But it's always ongoing. I think we miss the, 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 the more tactile quality of what it means to be engaging with community. And in, and in a more stillness, right? A less frenetic dynamic is happening when, when you're talking about this, um, this book, this, this conversation that Miranda is having with all kinds of people, largely the love of her life. And she is ringing these, these nuanced, uh, details and, and, and notions that are driving who she is and how she's trying to get to who she needs to be and channeling that into this, you know, this it's, it's the most natural thing, right? It's, it's biblical in a lot of sorts. And there are other texts that operate the same way for Buddhist, for Muslim, for Christian, like it is a conversation. It's not, it's not necessarily meant to be this literal undertaking. It is a poetic remembrance it is a it is a, a living memorial to an experience of someone and i think that is a community conversation but but a, a different narrative undertaking and so with digital media we're always like in this weird yeah. chasm but there's a quietude to the experience of a text um and, and there's the conversation that the that the writer is having with themselves and with others that are in the making of it. And then there's a conversation that is had with the reader and the text. And that is um, an essential community dialogue that I, I, I take away. I mean, I just, I love to read anyway, but I, even more, it, make, it enriches the quality of how you engage. Yeah. You know, I have a friend who's teaching me how to make books, like literally make books. And it's just, it's 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 such a craft right it's a it's such an amazing skill but you know when you know when you know about how something is how something comes to be you have a richer understanding and appreciation for it yeah so that's right and yeah i just love this story I, I'm, yeah I'm, i really I, I got a lot out of it and i danielle thank you for your time today i hope we get to see you on the emmy's red carpet because god damn it you really deserve to be there but anyway that's a whole other story <laughs> He's so kind. I, I mean, to to have witnessed everybody's like responses is, is the the that's the richest blood connection. <laughs>